And we're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to talk about something very sensitive, and it's cancer. Well, the conversation around cancer can never be overemphasized, and that's because cancer is the second leading cause of death worldwide, with 30 million cancer deaths annually. Now, more than 40% of cancer-related deaths could be preventable as they are linked to modifiable risk factors such as smoking, alcohol use, poor diet, and physical inactivity. War Cancer Day is usually in February, and it aims to promote uh, awareness about cancer as a public health issue and to also strengthen action towards improving access to quality care, screening, early dicta dictation, treatment, and uh, palliative care. The theme for the 2023 marks the second year of the campaign uh, that says close the care gap which is about understanding the inequalities in cancer care and taking action to make the necessary progress uh, to address them. Uh, we have to unite to close the gap in cancer care. And joining us this morning for this discussion is Tewa Onasoya. I hope I got that well. Founder Esquisite Magazine Cancer Care Foundation right here in Lagos. Uh, Tewa, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. It's great to be here. Great morning. Yes, please. <laughs> All right, so quickly bring us up to speed. The 4th of February, right. it's uh, an annual event. And mm -hmm. why exactly is this date very important? And why do we have to you know, talk about this every other February? Right, OK. So World Cancer Day is the 4th of February. And it's been, um, it has been celebrated for so many years. Now. I can't remember the exact year. year. But um, it is a day where the world comes together to um, have one voice, so to speak, to talk about, you know, all the different cancers. Um, I'm sure you know that different cancers have different awareness months, like January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. I think February is um, something to do with Children um, Cancer Awareness Month as well, and then it goes on. So um, February 4th, a day where everybody comes together. We talk about the theme, the theme of the year being um, closing the gap, close the gap um, for cancer care. Um, not only in Nigeria, but, Nash well, but um, globally as well. So, yeah, on the 4th of February, everybody comes together. Whatever cancers you're, um, I say whatever cancers you're particular about, because every World Cancer Day, we only talk about cervical cancer, because there are other organizations and other people that talk about, you know, um, all the other cancers anyway. But every year, 4th of February, we're singing the song of raising awareness for the different cancers and making sure that people know their choices. So let's talk about the different cancers just before yeah. coffee comes in now. Uh, so we have different cancers. Yeah. Uh, which one? I know that uh, the one that's very prominent is breast cancer. Yes, everybody talks about breast cancer like it's the only cancer that affects <laughs> women. <laughs> but it isn't. We, so at the Exclusive Magazine Cancer Care Foundation, we're always saying that not all cancers are pink. Teal is the color for cervical cancer. And would you believe that every single day, 26 women die in Nigeria of cervical cancer? That's like roughly one woman every hour from a cancer that is preventable. So our mission is to make sure women know about cervical cancer. Because some women, if, even as of last week, someone was asking us if she has a cervix, a woman that has gone to university, learned, if you understand what I mean. So the, the awareness level is very low. So cervical cancer is the cancer of the cervix, which is the one we talk about, you know, more about, because it's one of the few cancers that is 100% preventable. When I say 100%, that means if it's caught early, the person can be treated and nothing's going to happen. And even if the, even if it's, um, even if the person has pre-cancer cells, it's one of the few cancers that actually shows you, okay, I'm coming, no, you know, start taking precaution type thing. It has a pre-cancer stage. And pre-cancerous cells can be treated, but it's when it gets to the full-blown cancer that, you know, it now becomes a, a big problem. So our aim is to just, you know, let people know that it's out there, it's killing women needlessly, and people need to get screened. All right. Uh, you talked about the, the fact that it's been on for a lot, a lot decades now. Yeah, the and, work. And I think did. 1933, uh -huh. first initiated by a World Health Organization, and God knows who we were, you know, <laughs> where we were in 1933. Um, but um, close the care gap um, has been the, the theme for the past three years. I mm. mean, last year we sat here in Mercy and we talked about close the care gap or closing the care gap as well. Uh, what, what does it mean um, when we say closing the closing care gap? The care so gap. we can understand and get into the spirit of the, 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 the uh, celebration or the uh, vacuum. And why has it been, you think, necessary to keep that theme on for the past three years? 
So from my perspective, I think it's the fact that, like you said earlier, 40% of the cancers are preventable. And a lot of people are not, you know, they're not aware or even going out there to be health conscious or, you know, be health wise. And when we say closing the gap, there's so many cancers that people shouldn't be dying of. So we want to make sure that we're closing that care gap where people have access to free screening, even if it's not free screening, at least getting screened. People have access to information. People have access to vaccines because there are some vaccines that can prevent some cancers like the cervical cancer, you know. And then there's also the bias towards women. I know you're, you're, right now, you're probably thinking, oh, yeah, we've, we've pulled out the gender card again. But then again, seriously, <laughs> in some parts all over the world, men get access to, to health care than women do. So we want to be able to make sure that everyone has a free and fair well, access. We, we, we have we mother and child hospitals. I don't I don't see um father and son hospitals. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand what you mean. I understand. That was a lighter, you know. But 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 yeah so 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 we, we see a lot of you know you're talking about a screening for instance. Yeah. We see a lot of um facilities being put up by state governors mm -hmm. across the states. Mm -hmm. I can look at the one that Wiki, yes, on Wiki is Excellency, right. the governor of Riverside recently did, uh, in the name of uh, Peter Odeli, who is himself a medical doctor, cancer screening and care center. Mm -hmm. You know, we have uh, screening centers in a lot of uh, general hospitals around the country. Yeah. Uh, uh, so is it, is it still a problem to get screened in Nigeria? It's still a big problem. The awareness is still very, very low. So there, we have different stages of problems, so to speak. It's, you know, the number of screening, um, screening centers that are available and the number of people actually going for the screening. Even we that organize free screening, it's still a struggle sometimes to get people to come out for the free screening. Because some of them would say, oh, I'd rather eat than, you know, go for a health check or go for a screening or things like that. So the awareness is very low and people are not readily going out there. But people have to understand the fact that prevention is way better than cure, way, way better. And if screenings are being done and if they're going, if there are any free screenings available and they're going for it, it's better to know what's happening to your body than to know, you know, when it's now too late and even more expensive. Because cancer treatments, especially in Nigeria, is very expensive and not that easily accessible as well. So, yes, you know, there are some, and I'm going to say some centers, because, yes, there, there are quite a number of centers, but there are not that many, you know, considering the number of, of people in Nigeria, well, over 200 million, and you can count the number of cancer centers in Nigeria. On our website, we have a list of um, some of the cancer centers that you can get your screening done and treatments and things like that. What's the and website? not that many. Our website is www.smearitafrica.com. Smear as in S-M-E-A-R and it.com, okay, okay. we have a list there. And you would think that, I mean, you would, you would, we would like for the list to be extensive. You know, we're talking Lagos. Lagos is almost 20 million people. We have thousands of centers, but you know, we, we have a few. So, so, so I, mean, I mean, in trying to understand, you know, what the challenge here is mm. that uh, we don't have enough awareness as to all of this, uh, could it be a policy, uh, deficiency like we don't have enough policy in the direction what exactly could be responsible for this lack of awareness um, I'm not sure I should say policy because I mean we have the the ministries and the and the different um, governmental organizations that are trying to be health conscious and put, putting the message out there I think it's it's a case of um, it's a case of it not being enough it's a case of not, not, it not being enough. And people are, you know, they're not, yes, people are dying, but they don't really care about, you know, health, no, I'd rather eat type of thing. You know, we're in a culture where people would rather eat than know what's going on with their bodies. So I think it's, a, it's, it's two ways. It's people being aware, the publicity being out there, and also people actually taking advantage of wherever they see anything happening. When I talk about awareness, I'm talking about, you know, in January, the noise should be everywhere. And even all through the year, doctors should be telling their patients, do you know about X, Y, Z? Go and get screened. If you're not screening at our center, do you know, you know, here's a list of where you can go. The government should also be, you know, sending messages out there to everybody to go. And it's a, it's a case of us all being our sisters and brothers keepers. 
so to speak. And we say, you know, I said earlier that cervical cancer color is teal. So we put it, we change the acronym to tell every awesome lady about cervical cancer. So if I'm speaking to you, I'm telling you about it, you're telling the next person. So we're telling as many people as possible. But then again, it's information. We can't say that the whole world will hear about it. We just have to keep going and not stop. And we're looking at, you know, the fact that uh, one of the greatest ways to, to eradicate or to, to prevent, you know, deaths uh, uh, um, from cancer, like you said, mm. people are dying from cervical cancer. It's education. Yeah. So what do people out there need to know about uh, cancer? We talk about this every year, mm. uh, but we can't talk about it enough, like you're saying. Yeah. So let's look, look at the causes of cancer, the risk factors, and what people mm. can do to ensure that they stay alive. Yeah. The number one thing I would say is cancer is no respecter of person. Rich, poor, you know, girl, boy, man, woman, um, Tall, short, do you understand what I mean? It's no respect of young person. People? Young people, yeah, you've got people that, that are early 20s getting cervical cancer. You're thinking, what happened here? Even last year, um, last week, I was speaking to a lady that got diagnosed of, of breast cancer at 26. So it's not like, it's not a case of, oh, it's a, it's a form of, it's a, cancer happens to people that are older. No, you get children getting leukemia. That's, you know, blood cancer. So people just need to be aware that our diet, our physical activity, our, you know, our social um, activities as well, smoking, non-smoking, you know, even, I don't know if I should say the word sex on some radio, but, you know, sex. <laughs> intercourse. <laughs> intercourse, yeah, activities, all of those things are kind of like risk factors. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking from a cervical cancer perspective, for, for instance, the um, cervical cancer is caused by HPV virus, mm -hmm. which is, you know, that lives harmlessly in men. And then when a certain strain gets into the woman, then it starts replicating at an alarming rate. So that's through sexual contact. Mm -hmm. Breast cancer, for instance, you know, you have different indicators for breast cancer. People talk, um, they talk about, you know, people that smoke, um, ladies that smoke a lot and things like that. But all of these things can be avoided if we're screening and self-testing ourselves. Self-testing for breast cancer, not cervical cancer. Oh, well, we, we have to go now. And unfortunately, uh, we have run out of time. And then uh, usually when you have conversations like this, you only hope that you have enough time to talk about this. Mm. But we'll definitely not stop. And we commend what your organization is doing. Thank you. And we ask that you continue to do the good work well, right here yes. to always support. But before she that, goes, um, yeah, you, you said that foundation has... Um, that's some outreaches. Are you having any outreach this time? Yes. How can people take advantage of what you're doing? Of what we're doing. Okay, so on Saturday, when we did the World Cancer Day walk for cervical cancer, we screened ladies free. And we still we have a mandate to screen as many people this quarter. So if you go to our website, www.smeritafrica.com, you will get information of where the next screenings are gonna happen. And they are free screenings. So you should, you know, tell every awesome lady about cervical cancer prevention. So that has everything. We have an uh, Instagram page as well at imac underscore cervical cancer prevention and all the information are Nothing there. Nothing for the men. Men we can take it over <laughs> so <ourselves>. our partners, <laughs> our partners, the Dozi Mobosi Foundation, they are big on prostate cancer. So men that are over 40, look for the, you know, go to search the Dozy Mobosi Foundation. You'll find information about their next at their next um, cancer screening um, points. Okay. And they have a mobile block bus as well. So they drive to different locations and screen men. And men, please go out. Because eight, eight out of 10 men could potentially get prostate cancer. But tell the men are afraid of going to the hospital. They're afraid of getting screened. Nobody wants to go to the hospital. Oh, tell coffee. What's that? Oh, colonoscopy. <laughs> but for men, it's easy for prostate cancer to test for prostate cancer because all they need to do is do a prick on your finger to check your sugar level. We have to. Sorry, I'm talking about Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, okay. awesome. Thank you uh, very much. Tewa, we have to go. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation this Thank morning. You. We have been speaking with Tewa Onasonya, uh, founder of Exquisite Magazine uh, cancer Foundation right here, or Cancer Care Foundation in Lagos. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, then. And that's the size of our package right here on The Breakfast. We return tomorrow with more uh, right here on uh, Plus TV Africa. Um, the news tonight is up next. Hope you get yourself some narrow notes today. Just keep watching. And I am Messi Boko. Have a great morning.